morning. Uh, thanks for inviting me. I'm not an expert, which I think is fine, but I've come just to share my experiences and try to tell you about how I see the web. Uh, my name's Lorna. Most of the time, I'm a developer advocate at Nexmo. Um, today, I'm speaking about keyboard accessibility. So Nexmo, the excellent communications platform provider, kind of this isn't really relevant to them, but they were so excited about Monkey Gras that they sponsored a round of beer anyway. So yay for supportive employers. Um, today, <laughs> thank you. Today, we're going to talk about me and about my keyboard. Now, this is a brand new experience for me because I normally don't introduce myself. Uh, when I give talks, I say, hi, I'm Laura, and I run with the content and try and just hide behind the code and the stuff that I normally talk about. <clears throat> Today, it's all about me and about my keyboard. I'm here to share my experiences as a user that doesn't use a pointing device of any kind. I haven't for 10 years or more as a result of a horrible RSI injury. Um, I appreciate all your advice and the suggestions of alternative input devices. I have tried them all. Um, by not taking my hands off the keyboard, I am still able to work full time as a software developer and a developer advocate. My pain is manageable. I am still economically active at this point. Everything is amazing. However, I might be disabled. In computer terms, I am. Um, in real life, there are not, not that many things I can't do, but if you see me trying to get the lid off something, please help me. Um, <laughs> I don't have a lot of grip or motor control now. Um, despite being disabled, I'm not an accessibility expert. This is a bit like, despite being a minority, I'm not a diversity expert, which also seems to disappoint a lot of people. Sorry. Um, so, once upon a time, <clears throat> a long time ago, I realized I was having a problem with the mouse arm, like, couldn't really move my arm for a few months. Um, and at that time, and if you haven't controlled your browser from the keyboard before, you think about tabbing through the links. Now, <clears throat> 10 years ago, that was a little bit easier because there wasn't quite the same amount of nonsense going on in headers, and, and the left-hand scrolling bar was less of a thing. Um, but yeah, tab, 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 and that's, your, that's how you imagine that we use the web, and I did for a long time. Um, I also, for ages, had JavaScript disabled. So until about five years ago, no JavaScript was better because JavaScript was the me mechanism that took those perfectly good lists of links and folded them up so you couldn't get there unless you hovered. Now, of course, we use touchscreen devices. My hover problem has mostly gone away because everybody's designing for phones. So I have JavaScript turned on by default now, but I still have a plugin in my browser called Disable HTML, which allows you to turn off HTML or JavaScript or CSS. Today, it's usually CSS that I turn off in order to make links visible and clickable. So just so you know, the prettier it is, the more likely that I'm reaching for, ironically, the button <laughs> to turn off the CSS to make this manageable. <clears throat> I graduated from the tab key to using a spatial navigation. So Opera used to have spatial navigation. What that means is you could hold down shift and press the arrow keys, and Opera would make a good guess at what was in that direction. So it would give you like a button or a link or a form field or whatever. And then you could focus it, type in the form box. Hopefully you can submit a form by pressing enter, or you could like get onto the button. If it's a picture of a button, well, then I can't submit your form. Don't do that. Um, you'll notice that this is in past tense. Opera did something terrible <laughs> um, and rebased their code base onto somebody else, and this feature no longer exists. Um, I felt sad about that because it seemed, it was a genuinely, it was a really good way to use the web. I am using different tools now. And when I looked around, I saw, oh, the W3C has a spatial navigation standard that they're working on, that they're developing. And it's <clears throat> spatial navigation is a, is a really good way to use the web, but there are lots of reasons why you might want to. For example, when you're using your set-top box or your Amazon Fire Stick, or when you're on the remote, you've got up, down, left, right, and enter, right? If you're using clicking buttons, switches for input, 
It's ideal. You can get all the way around the web using this. I did it for years. So I want to show, I'm going to, <clears throat> using unfamiliar tech, I'm going to try and show you some videos of the experiences that I'm talking about. So this is the demo of that W3C spatial navigation tool. You can just press the arrows and move around the page and focus different parts. That's great, but you can't tell what I'm pressing. So we're going to do a big tangent, and I'm going to introduce you to a tool called Screen Key. Screen Key is a black bar that appears across your screen and shows the keys I'm pressing. So here I've typed echo space hello and return. And in the dark bar here, you can see that echo space hello and the return key displayed. So that hopefully when I show you how I control my web browser from the keyboard, you've got some idea what's going on. So here's that spatial navigation demo again. But this time, you can see the keys. So it's all arrow keys. I can move around, I can focus different things, and I can press return to select a menu item and jump to that place in the page and navigate things that way. I'm no longer using spatial navigation or Opera. I'm using Vimium. Vimium is not an accessibility tool. right? Vimium is the hacker's browser. It's intended for those people who prefer to use the keyboard, the command line, who've already learned the Vim shortcuts with their fingers, to be able to control their browser in a power user kind of way. The intention was never to enable people like me to use the web. But oops, unintended consequences, it's brilliant. So Vimium is a plugin for Chrome and for Firefox. You'll notice that these videos are taken in Chrome. Um, I'm between laptops, and I haven't quite figured out how to stop Firefox opening lots of things in new windows, and then I get lost. So um, I'm still in Chrome at the moment. It does work really well in Firefox, and we're using it on my other machine. So if you use either of those browsers, I would definitely recommend you give it a look. The idea is that when you press the magic button, which is F, F causes labels to pop up all over, your, all over the website that you're looking at. And then you just type the, the label of the thing that you want. So you haven't got to kind of traverse through or navigate with arrows. You just say that one, and you type the thing that you want, and that's the thing that happens. So <clears throat> I'm using LaunaJane.net so that I don't incriminate anyone else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's just an ordinary WordPress site. There's nothing accessible about my website. Um, it's just made of HTML, and that's how that works. You press F, labels appear. So I can press C to go to the home button. I can press D to go to blog. H will jump me into the search box, and it will be focused. I'll be able to type in the search box and return submits that form. So I can interact with this page. Vimium is well, it's a Vim-related plugin. So I can press J to scroll down. Oh, haha. <laughs> if I press escape, it brings you, it unfocuses whatever you have focused. I'm also a Vim user. I think the escape is just like a nervous tick. Um, <laughs> so you can press J to scroll down a little bit, or D to jump down half a page, if you're familiar with Vim. And then you can click on links. So F to show the links, and SF to click this link, generating PHP library code from OpenAPI. So this is a recent blog post. We can scroll down. We can have a look. Now this is magic. I know it's tiny. Oh, and it's right behind here. <clears throat> I can press slash and start typing a search term. I feel like I'm really not telling you anything rocket science, but genuinely, this is life changing. I can start searching, and, and you can't really see, but it's down here. You, it's starting to search for the, thi for the thing that I'm typing. And when I press Enter, where it is on the screen, that text, flat text, not in an editable area, it's selected. It's really selected. I can hold down Shift and arrow along and, collect and highlight it. And I can press Control c and I can copy static text from the web into my copy-paste buffer. I'm a software engineer. I can copy and paste code and commands for the first time in five years, 10 years. This stuff is incredible. Right? You know a keyboard shortcut to copy and paste. 
but you don't know when to click and drag and select. I used to speak the class name aloud, change windows, and try and hear the echo in my head. I can do the same thing with tiny URLs. We have the bots in the IRC channels that give a tiny URL for every link. But the URLs have got a bit long. They're like eight characters now. And it's quite hard to type that into the other window. This is a game changer. Oh my god, I can copy and paste. I'm quite like, oh. <laughs> um, But it's genuinely, it's, it's amazing. I don't want to be negative about this. There are lots of good things happening on the web. I was so pleased to see Louise from GDS here yesterday. I'm resident in the UK, so I do need to do online things with my government. And it is possible to do stuff well, and GDS are a great example. If I see a newfangled government-styled form, um, <laughs> I know that I'm not going to need help. I actually don't have ongoing clerical support at this point. I get stuck so rarely that just waiting for a bystanding family member to be in the house is good enough to get me through what I need. And that didn't used to be true. I used to work regularly with clerical support, both for personal stuff like government forms. Um, and for, I used to run a business as well. And that stuff is hard. GDS are a brilliant example, and they publish all of their guidelines. So you get clear examples of this is how you do a form. This is how you label your form. This is how you prompt the user for what you fill in. If you use one of their forms, it is always very clear what you have focused and what's going to happen next. Their forms always submit in a really reliable way. I see that, because they've done all of the car tax, vehicle licensing and stuff, that end of things is done. Not all of the, I moved house about 18 months ago and not all of the um, land tax stuff is done. So. I know as soon as I see this style, this is going to be fine. There are people doing it well, and they're sharing what they do. You have to work hard to invent something that excludes people. The good work is already done, and I'd love us to build on that. So there definitely are some good examples. There are some le less, less good examples. Any, anything that you've invented is, pro is probably a problem. Um, standard components behave in a standard way. My tools know how to support them. I know what to expect. Um, we've agreed how things should work. Your slider on your input form, I probably can't focus your slider. And if I can, I sure as hell can't slide it. If you want input data from people like me, then maybe you could have radio buttons one to five. Instead, I know how to work a radio button. Um, they, the situation with date pickers has got better. I don't swear as soon as I see one now. Um, the, there are standards coming in HTML5 and also some of those new, new um, sort of component libraries, the modern ones on the front end. Some of those behave OK as well. If I can type in the box and it's obvious what the date format is, yeah, I want that, please. Because <laughs> once you open that, even if I can click on the day, probably it doesn't fold itself away again, and then I can't fill in the form underneath. Like, just try to build on stuff that is standard. <clears throat> Please. One thing that's really unhelpful to keyboard-only users is helper keyboard shortcuts. I am using my key presses already. They are in use. I control my browser with them. My key presses go to Vimium, and Vimium interprets them to click on links, checkboxes, you know, buttons, things that appear on the web. If you introduce the only way you can select one of these is by pressing a button, I can't interact with this. This screenshot is taken from a call for papers. So that's a conference that didn't want to include me, and I won't be speaking there, because I can't let them know about my talk. Type form, get a special mention, <laughs> because they are so widely used, and they are so inaccessible. All kinds of organizations who are doing everything right are using type form for surveys, for inputs. I can't let you know about the accessibility problems in your tool, because the survey that you sent me is even less accessible than the thing I started with. 
I want to change the world. I want to take responsibility for that. But when I emailed Typeform support to let them know some of the issues that I was facing and to suggest some fallbacks, I got this response. As the product and company continues to mature, I am sure we will get to tackling accessibility as soon as we can. So <clears throat> I've had a lot of responses like this over the years. And Typeform don't really deserve to be called out like this, other than they did actually send me this email. So <laughs> um, <laughs> I see this less often. It's becoming less acceptable to feel this way. Even Slack have made the majority of things I need to do in their tool, I'm not going to say accessible, I'm going to say possible. Some of them are 20 key presses, right? So I'm not on a level playing field with my able-bodied colleagues, but I can read and reply to your thread if I've got the time, the energy, and the motivation to get there. It is now possible. That's an improvement, and I'm pathetically grateful. We need to talk about drop downs. I have web people in the room. You don't get away without the rant about drop downs. I did drop the rant about the modal windows, but if you could check that the cookie pop up closes with an ordinary link, that'd be great. Um, the more wonderful your drop down is, and I include those text boxes that you're going to search in, but you start typing and things appear, right? All of that stuff, the more rich it is, the less likely, less chance I stand of being able to. Um, interact with it. By all means, make a form that I type in, submit, and then add some extra enhancements, find as you type if you want. But the fundamental basics need to be there. So for example, today I'll be leaving after lunch, I'm going to FOSDEM. I need to get the Eurostar. All right, cool, let's buy a ticket. I can focus the field. I can't arrow down. I can't pick from, all right, okay, well, Fair enough, how about this field? No, oh, I'll just type, London. I can't select the option. I literally can't go to, I mean, I've obviously bought my ticket, but <laughs> I can't select from a choice of six options. It, I mean, this is a really beautiful example. You can start typing and things happen. I can't select it. I can see it, I can't click it. Because in order to activate the keyboard shortcuts, you have to defocus the field, and then the drop down goes away. This is really common. And I see this pattern absolutely all over the place. I am definitely winning the Employee of the Month Award today, because this is one of Nexmo's public facing sites. This is our knowledge base. Um, it's a front end to Zendesk. Now, if you ask a technical question to Nexmo, you're very likely to get me. I hang out on the community Slack channels. I answer the Twitter. The Stack Overflow stuff typically comes to me. If I'm awake in your time zone, I'm going to be looking up the answers on the knowledge base. So I'll be looking for, let's say, delivery receipt information. I type. This search form doesn't submit, doesn't have a button, doesn't submit on Enter. Drop downs occur. I can arrow, but I don't know what I've selected, and I can't click on anything. I can't get to these links. Now, if you really do need to ask Nexmo a question, don't worry, I've got you covered. What I really use is this. This is 10 lines of PHP running on Heroku, because Zendesk have an API, and I'm a software developer. And what I have developed for me is a far superior interface. There is a text field in which I can type, and there is also a search button. And when I press the button, a list of links is displayed. People, this is beautiful. Look at it. I could click on, I can read all of those links, and I could click on any one of them. I can just look, all of them, they're clickable, and now I can open the page that I want. So what can we do? I didn't come here to tell a tale of woe, and I didn't come here for your sympathy, but I want to tell you my story. What can we do? My message is this. Keep calm and embrace standards. The work is done for you. Adopt standard components. They work for me and for people like me and for people completely unlike me and for people who don't even have 
a voice in the room. HTML5 is changing the world. You've just seen the rant about the semantic market. Give me those milestones. Give me the nav. Give me the content. Build of those standard components. I couldn't understand why I could suddenly see video on the web. This is two, three years ago. Because there's an HTML5 standard video component. I can focus a video, play a video, stop a video, and get my focus back again. I've seen the one with the sneezing panda. I've seen, like, the world has changed because people adopted the standard components. If you want to think about how your content is going to look to people like me, check out the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. I'm sorry, it's more complicated than there is a tool that you can use to validate your stuff. You're going to need to read this, understand it, work at it. it it's, it's not a quick win. But it's something that will make a big difference, like I say, to people like me and to people nothing like me. Before I wrap up, I'd like to leave you with a challenge. It's going to take a little bit of your time. I want you to take a little bit of time when you're at your laptop, maybe as long as it takes you to drink a cup of coffee. And I want you to unplug your mouse or put a post-it note over your trackpad, because that seems to be how we point these days. See what you can still get done. See if you can make some small adaptations and still get things done. If you need help with Gmail in the web, I know how to do that. <laughs> um, just challenge yourself. Also, it is a productivity hack, and I've converted a few people, mostly front-end devs, where I've had to ask for help. I'm a server-side developer, um, and I, I don't know a lot about HTML. And the reason for that is, well, open your developer tools and unplug your mouse. Let me know how you go. Um, I fundamentally, can't, I'm not capable of doing that job. But this is my challenge. Give it a try. Think about the perspective from other people. I've got a massive list of resources for you here. I will tweet this link. I'm around in the break and until lunch for questions. And I'll just say thanks for your attention. Thank you.